I've been waiting to do this unboxing since, let's see if I can find a date on this actually. October 26, 2023. So it's been a few months and I've been, I've been dying to do this because this is um, not really a collaboration or anything in the usual sense that we do. It's a leather collaboration. And coming from um, starting this whole business with the love of leather working and the love of leather and you know the, the leather goods that we made that solely informed uh, my edu inform my education on leather so that I could judge boots and shoes and it's kind of backwards informed the leather now and so now I'm at a point where I know lots and lots about leather and I have great relationships with a lot of these tanneries and so it's it's really cool and it's, it's a it's a dream come true to be able to design my own leather and in true like Rose Anvil style it's it's a little wacky and you know, cause that's what I like doing. I like so many people that do collaborations and design stuff. It's just such a safe bet all the time. And uh, that's boring. You know, I don't like, I just don't like doing that. I, I'd rather fail miserably and try something that goes way beyond um, the usual thing than just pump out something normal. And it's just like, that's, you know, it's like you got one shot to do this thing. You, you know, how many, how long am I actually going to be able to do all this stuff? You just never know. And so it's, when I do these kind of collaborations, I go, I go pretty hard. I like to just design some wacky stuff. Um, so what is this wacky stuff I'm referring to on my cheat sheet on my phone? Well, this is a little collaboration I've done with Seidel Tannery. And um, they're based out of uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. They make arguably the highest or the most durable leather in the entire world. There's a reason why White's, Nick's, JK, um, a lot of like the really heavy duty work boot brands, they use Seidel's leather because it is about as hardy and strong as you can get. They really specialize in this chrome tanned work boot leather. You know, they make thorough goods leather. And so they just are, if you're gonna design leather, there's, there's a few tanners you wanna work with and Seidel's one of them. And excuse me, I was Diet Mountain Dew. Chip, I'm all jacked up on Mountain Dew. The reason this kind of came up is initially I was like, I love doing these collaborations. Like, well, how cool would it be if we took it a step further and we did a collaboration and I designed the leather. And so I was like, okay, well, like, what do I want to do? How could I make something really unique? And like, how can I roll in some of my favorite features and attributes of leather into the leather itself? And I really liked, I really liked the, I, I've always liked how leather as it ages, it really starts showing its scars. It, it's, it roughs off that top layer of, of uh, dye and you start seeing, kind of the life behind the leather. You know, I, I like my boots to show that I've worn them. I like them to, to prove that I'm actually using boots for their intended purpose. I don't want them to look brand new. I like beat up stuff. I like, because um, what I'm, uh, a, a big uh, influence when I was a kid um, was a guy in my, my small town named uh, Doug Bassett. And I used to like things, everything perfect. Like I didn't want to scratch on anything. I didn't want anything wrong with all my little, whatever it was at the time, like 14 year old, like X, or Xbox, whatever. I don't know, whatever I was playing with. And uh, he kind of changed my opinion on that because he was telling me like the scars and the dents and the dings that you put into the things that you, you own is what infuses the soul into the life into that product. If it's brand new, there's nothing there. There's no history, there's no like, um, uses there's no aging there's no seasoning of the product you know and, and so he really changed my opinion on on letting stuff show their natural wear and show their natural use because it is you're, you're taking this blank canvas of a finished product and you're infusing its value because if it just sat on a shelf for its whole life it's kind of a you know a sad thing especially when you get to these really high-end leather goods and they just never get worn and so i've always loved that aspect of it and so i was like how can i make a leather or design a leather that's gonna take that concept and take it even further and make it a really visual representation of that. Another leather thing that I really like is this, this popular trend that's been going on the last few years, especially with the T-Core leather, where you have that, that stain on top of the leather, but instead of it being struck all the way through, so it's black all the way through or whatever color, it's just on the surface level. And so what that does, is it allows you to have a really high contrast. Like when the Drifter, I left him at my condo, but the Drifter 1.0, you know, we did a T-Core leather because I liked that that same thing over and over and over, right? And I was like, how do we take it even further? You know, like, what do we what can we do to really juice that up? And I was like, what if we came out with the bloodline of leathers? You know, this whole concept of like, it's, it's literally animal skin that we're reusing to better our lives. And as you beat it up and as you scratch it, you're literally scratching and scarring and, and beating up 
what was once an animal skin. And I, I really like that concept of uh, almost paying homage to the animal by a constant reminder that this is this is like this was the life of an animal. As a little bit cheesy as that sounded. And I like the concept of uh, I just like red generally. So this bloodline of leathers is the goal is to have a leather that looks completely normal from the outside. Um, it's probably gonna be like a, a black base. And then once you start using it, once you start really abusing this leather and breaking it in, that top coat starts to wear off and you have this really bright pop of red underneath to really signify like the blood of the animal, to show that really heavy contrast and show that those scars that you're putting into your boot are representative of the scarring of the, the leather. And I, I just like that concept. So I was like, yeah, I think, I think we could do something with that. And so I have three concepts with this bloodline of leathers. One, blood latigo, where we take a latigo and instead of that really deep purple, we almost make it black, like almost pitch black to where you can't even tell that it's latigo. And then once you start bending it and creasing it, folding it, it's actually a really, really dark red. So when you'd scratch a latigo, it'd pop a little red, but you could always lay it back down flat and it'd be almost black again. The second one would be uh, blood core. So this would be almost like the red dog leather we did, which is a sidle leather we did on the Drifter One, where it's a really bright red core, similar to a T core, but the top coat is black. And you know, there's some leathers out there that do a similar thing where they, you know, Solar Bear has a rub off leather. A lot of companies, I think Thursday and a few other guys have done a rub off leather where it's a thick layer of wax on top. And after time it kind of wears off. But I want it to be like a firm, hard layer that you actually have to really get down past, or not past the grain, but really scratch into the grain to get that pop of red. You have to earn that like pop of red. And, uh, and then the third one would be Blood Bison. And this would be similar to like the bison leather that JK uses on in their boots. But instead of it being like a solid color, I want just in the ridges to be bright red and then the top to be black. So you almost don't even see the little pops of red. And so this that's that's the concept, the bloodline of leathers. And right now I've got two samples, well technically three. I don't have the blood latigo because uh, Seidel was already super gracious and uh, Fritz Jr. Was, was running these samples for me. And, and so I've got the blood core, two samples, and I've got the blood bison, and I have not seen the blood bison yet. I don't even, I have no idea what it looks like, and I've, it's literally been since October, I've been wanting to open this up. So let's open up what I've already seen with the blood core. Um, so what we have here is, I'm like out of breath, this is so exciting. I love this stuff. So this, this sample is basically red dog, but with black on top. So you get that red core, and then when you really start scratching this and beating it up, see how like, let me put it closer. They'll get you some B-roll when we actually shoot this. See how you have to like really scratch it to get that, that red to pop. And I think this looks really good. I think we're close on this, but I, th I think I would like that core to be even more red. This is a lot more of like an orangey hue. And I want it to be like this color of red dog underneath so that it's pitch black, but in the core you have that, that pop of red. And then this is another sample that uh, Fritz made up for me where this is based off of the double shot. So this is a really oily leather that uh, Whites has really used a lot in their like uh, their semi work boots. It's similar to Chrome XL, really waxy. And then this, and this one has a wax layer on top. And this, this stuff comes off a lot easier. So this more red dog, if I sit there and, and rub on this, it's gonna take a while to get that top coat off because it's a lot stronger of a, of a top coat. Versus this leather is a wax and I can sit there and create some friction and really rub through that. The, only th the thing I like about this leather is the core is a little bit more red or like at least the under layer is a little bit more red, but I don't like how easily the top coat comes off. And so I think we're, I think we're close on the blood core. I think all we need to do is really make this leather, it's an oil tanned uh, red dog with the over dye on it, and just make this way redder. Just like, you know, not, maybe not like a sports car red, a little, maybe a little bit darker, but enough that like when you scratch it, it's clear that it's red underneath. So we're already like pretty stinking close on this. And, and uh, this was actually being developed mid last year. And the goal was to have it made and finished in time for the Drifter 
but you know, it's like it's prototyping leather, and there's it just didn't get done, and, and uh, we were a little bit tight on time, and so we had a backup plan with the Drifter too, which was the all black Drifter, which I was totally fine with waiting a year on this because I'm, I was really excited about that blacked out Drifter, and it turned out beautifully. I wear the reason I don't have them here is because I literally wear them all the time. So the Drifter Three is probably going to have the blood core leather, which I'm so excited for. Because to me, when that when we do the Drifter 3, Drifter 1 is going to be the red dog. Drifter 2 is going to be the T-Core black double shot. And then the Drifter 3 is going to be the combination of the two, where you've got the red core of the good guys, but the black coat on top with the black hat bad guys combining the one with the two to make the three. It's perfect, if it works out. So, oh, and if, um, so the reason that we knew it wasn't going to work for the Drifter 2 is because White's Seidel, shout out to Seidel, like all, this is all thanks to Seidel and Fritz Jr. and Fritz Sr. obviously. Um, Fritz rushed an order or a, a sample out to White's. White's rushed a boot to me and uh, made a drifter, original drifter 2.0, which was gonna be the blood core. But as you can see, after only a couple wears, I really wore through that that wax coat. And this is, this is it's still really cool and I really like it, but it's more of, it's more, it's more like that rub off leather of uh, Solovare and some of those other brands. And I like it, but it's, it's not the concept. Like I like to have, I want to have a really hard coat so that you, I can't just do like, put a little friction on it and rub it off. But it looks pretty sick. And if you disagree, I don't care because I think this is going to be so cool. Like just look at the tongue. Like imagine this, but like, a lot richer and a lot more uh, hard to get these highlights and lowlights. The boot's gonna be a lot more beat up like this. It's gonna be so cool. So that's the, the blood core leather. Now, uh, let's open up the blood bison. Oh, I'm like out of breath. Also, I've been working. Jim Green was just in town and so I'm um, recording this after they left and I'm tired because we, we went to the jazz game, we went out to get some food and stuff, and it was a really good time. So we got some content coming out, Jim Green, some a Q&A, uh, a, like an uh, African Ranger update, and some other special projects coming out with Jim Green, so it's gonna be fun. Feel free to put that in or not if you want, editors.